Well, why don't you tell me about yeah. your grade school? When I went to school, the first year, first day of school, uh, the teacher didn't like me, and I couldn't talk English. So I talked German in school, and they, uh, after school, she made me stay in because I had talked German. Well, I didn't know what she meant. Uh, so when the kids were all out of school, I ran out and I crossed the road and she followed me and she caught me and I bit her on the arm so hard that nowadays they would take him in as a suit. I remember I bit so hard that she was bleeding and she went up to my mother because she was boarding by the same yard but not by, by my folks and she uh, was just all black and blue and she asked why did he bit you well I made him stay in. And my mother, I don't know what she said. She didn't tell me. But I assume she told me, well, why you shouldn't have made him stay in the first day. At least give the little boy a chance. So I would know what she was talking about. But she was mad at me because when I, she boarded by the, by the, by the neighbors. And we were over there playing. And the boys, they had, well, she had boyfriends there. And they would tell us boys we should crawl underneath the, 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 the table and lift up her dress and we did and she got mad at us she kicked and I think she had it in for me I think it was not because of talking German I think it was because of that's what I thought and I never liked her I never did learn anything from her uh, I'm sorry to say I should have but I didn't <laughs> how many years was she there only one year just one year no yeah, she was she was a little bit too hard on the on the German kids so there was other cases where she uh, was so hard on the kids, and that's, I think the board decided they better have somebody else. And then the next years or two, we had, uh, I had to sit in between my sister and my cousin, because there were 30 kids in the school, and what I learned of ne next year was what I learned from my sister and from my uh, cousin. I could have well, might as well stayed at home and give me homeschooling, what I learned. And then the third year, I could barely write my name and uh, knew like the months of the year in English. But see, you have to remember in German, you said in German, in German like January was January, February, March, April. That's April. May, June, July, August. September, October, November, and December. Okay, and in English, by the time we knew that, it was the third year over with. By the time you knew the months and the days and, the, and your name, you had about three years done. And then you had seven months of school. So now you know how much education I got. Uh, in a trashing time, when it was a sixth grade, I had to stay home, help haul the weed home, which wasn't really fair, but we had to. Uh, and school started at 10.30 in the mornings. Then it was so cold, you walked around the school, had exercise in the school. Today they would call it uh, uh, exercising. That time you walked because it was too cold. And then... In the night, at 3.30, uh, they let it out because they had to walk home from school. So if you add all the months up when I went to school, I maybe have only like 4th, 5th grade, what they got today. That's about all I, my education would be. I did pass the 8th grade. Uh, we had to write 8th uh, eight grade exams. And we had to write it in Christmas because we went 8 years to school. And we weren't ready yet for the, uh, for the exams. But you have to remember our teachers were only maybe two-year high school girls that went two years to high school. So they didn't know that much either. So the school superintendents came out, and a lot of them farm schools, they said, you have to go till Christmas. You're not ready to write exams. So I did go, and I uh, had to go a little longer than eighth grade. You would say eight years, you know. But, uh, what was your 
was it like trying to learn English, being you spoke German? For me, it was hard. My brothers could talk English a little bit, but my mother couldn't talk English. My mother couldn't talk English very good at all. She couldn't help us in the school. My dad could, and he did help the older ones. But for some reason, he didn't have too much time for us younger ones. He, uh, uh, he believed in education, but he didn't fighting back. He didn't, uh, and asked, uh, they were all done with school, like my, all my brothers and sisters. My mother could uh, read a little bit then, learning from the kids. And uh, so it was hard, real hard, real, real hard. Now you got to slow down by that side. Okay. What was the punishment if you were caught speaking German? Just to yeah, to stay recess? in sometimes a half an hour after school. That's when I rent. That's the sign there. And you would just stay. You wouldn't have to write anything on the uh, floor. Well, you had to stay. Like we had, a, we could walk. So some of the kids, uh, they uh, they drove with the horses, but we walked home. Okay, this is what they call the Prairie Bell sign. You want to look at it? So this is what you and your brothers all went in together to build. Yeah, the, the belt. Well, our sons more so, but they are my brothers that they donated some, okay. you know, quite a bit. But uh, it was my boys that designed it, and uh, and uh, yeah. So what role did religion play for you growing up as a child? What? What role did religion play in your family when you were growing up? You know, were you went to church every Sunday? Did oh, okay. We um. Uh, yeah, we had a church, I'll show you when we get up the hill, there was a church a half a mile from home, so we always could run over to church. And uh, it was St. Joseph's Church. It burned down in the 50s, 57 I think it burned down. But it was mostly all letters that went to church. I, uh, I sang in church, like I told you earlier, when I was real young, because I was too mean, my mother made me sing. So I went, uh, but on the way home from church, we usually drove home with my folks. And then my dad, the first thing he would say, what did the priest have to say today? And if we didn't know nothing what the priest said, he kind of, he got I was a little bit upset. Next Sunday, I'll ask you what the priest had to say. And because he did that, he listened also better to the priest. Because some of my brothers asked them quite a few things, I was usually on the later side. I uh, I never never knew too much what the priest said. I was too busy doing other things. I think. <laughs> so you you quite often discuss the scriptures and the homilies. What was it like when the church went from speaking German to using English? When they when uh, when they was Latin. We, uh, you didn't understand a, a lot from Latin. So, you know, we were raised German, and the priest preached Latin, and then we went to English. I went to, for my first Holy Communion, in German. And I tell you what, if I have to tell you today what I said, I really don't know. We were so young, at that time, you just uh, forgot it. Uh, my parents didn't talk German. Uh, my mother did all the time, but my dad, in the later years, always talked English, uh, which was really hard on us kids because, you know, you were raised. Okay, here we're by the shrine, what they call the bell tower. All right, we can get out and then continue. You can continue. Tell me about the transition to English. And then. Uh, We had a, a couple of, well, there was one student that lived west of here. She was completely English. Her name is uh, uh, Lorraine. Her name is Baumgartner. She's married to a Baumgartner. But she was, uh, what was her last name? I forgot now. But anyway, she would tell us what a tongue was called in English, like a tongue when you hitch up horses. Your uh, your uh, 
different things that the English, the teachers didn't even know because they were German teachers also. So that girl, she could translate us a lot of words. So you had <laughs> way different than you, you think. You know, the teachers had little high school, yes, but they had a lot of the words they didn't learn in high school, what they meant. So they didn't even know. So we were kind of lucky we had that girl there. She, she told us quite a few stuff in English. Uh, but they didn't live here too long, about three years, I think. But that was tough. That was hard. Mm -hmm. I, I know I learned just as hard as any other kid, but you got to remember, the church was, uh, was uh, Latin. The, the people talked German wherever you walked. You went to the English schools. The parents couldn't learn you how. They didn't know, most of the parents. I had, my father had pretty good education, but a lot of relatives and around here had, had really little. They couldn't even talk English. They couldn't write English. So. What was their reaction when the church went to using English? Well, there was, that was, some, some of it was really hard. I, I remember that was really hard. The church was real hard. And when they changed, but one thing about my dad, my dad could look forward so well. I'll tell you in a couple of other cases. He, uh, in church, he said, well, we have to follow, we have to follow as it goes on. Time will always change. He had always that good, then some of them said, no, that's no, that's not the way to do it. That's not the way it was when my parents grew up. My dad always had that go. He was in the chem electric, chem electric is where they got RA out to the rule. Way back in the early 40s, he went to a lot of meetings to get rural electricity for the telephones. He was on the board 35 years. My mother used to say, Joe, you're going to lose the farm yet. You're always driving around for other people, doing other things. See, I told you earlier, too, that he was, he liked to help. Where he made the money from, I don't know, uh, as good as he did. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a way of making money different a little bit than other people did. He got a little paid, you know, for some of the stuff that, like playing in the church, he buried lots of people. He got like $5 in the 30s. That was like a lot of money mm -hmm. for him. And uh, different uh, organizations where he belonged to that he made money, so he, that's how he, but, uh, but some families, they never had that opportunity that their parents could help them at all. Mm -hmm. We were kind of lucky. Yeah, definitely. No. So, <laughs> okay. you this scream server, I would say, could be bought maybe in 40, in the 40s, but it was not electric. You had to turn it by hand, and then when the electricity came out, that was hard work, turning by hand, because you had to turn real steady. Because the cream, the milk was put in here, came out of here, the cream came out of here, and the milk came out of here. It separated the cream from the milk. And the bowl, I'll show the bowl a little later, had to have that big of a speed. If you went too slow, too much milk came out of the cream. If you had turned it too fast, the cream got too thick. And how so, so you turned it. You, there was a, a belt, you turn it, it went cling, cling, and before it was not fast enough, it wouldn't do nothing. When it starts ringing, you had enough speed. So you kept on so it wouldn't quit ringing. So it was pretty close. And when the electric motors came out, you had to have the right pulley for the right speed. So you had to buy it that way. And uh, I didn't think we would talk about that, but anyway, since we're here, that's what you talk about. That's what you talk about the bowl that turns. You want to lift this bowl? That is, that is rather heavy, yeah. This is full of discs. Find discs. The discs are made like this. It's all full of discs. Maybe 40 discs. You put one disc, you had to have so many discs in here. 
that this separated the bowl of the milk from the cream. So the milk would actually go inside to where all the discs and it were. And, and it came out here. One came out here, one came out here. Oh, so like it the, would the bring cream, it up. The cream it would, would come off the top. Of I, the I would say, and it came up. It went through here, down, and it went up. And then it came out these holes right here. Neat. I never and here you adjusted it how heavy you wanted it, heavier or, or not so heavy. This is what they call a cream separator. They, uh, like how, long, uh, how much cream would you uh, milk? Okay, when you were, uh, depends how many cows you'd milk. I would say... Uh, We at home, when I was young, we milked a cream can, uh, uh, you had the three gallon cans, cream cans, full. And you got about a dollar a gallon, that was three dollars for one milk day for about 20 cows. When we uh, milked, my wife and I, sometimes you only got a quart. Depends how many cows you had milk. But, uh, it took about, it took pretty long for a three gallon, a three gallons of cream. It took about 45 minutes. Of just steady cranking and you would do it yourself. Nobody would take over. For well, you. when you were, when you were alone, you would have to do it. But like in my case, when I was at home, there were more kids. My mother, dad would maybe crank it up. And then if you went once, it didn't go too heavy, but you constantly had the same speed. But they last, said, now this is stainless steel, they did last us about forever, I think. You know, as far as uh, dishes. This is a little dirty now, but he didn't yeah. realize we were going to come out here. I didn't realize we would talk about that. Well, that's okay. That's the cream. That's Should the we head to the bar now? Yeah. It's little. Oh, we swing, and we did swinging and uh, seesawing by the trees. My dad would make a seesaw and, and swing by the old trees. Nowadays, the new kind, they use that type of stuff. But your dad made those kind of things yes. for you. Yes, oh yeah, so you had something to play with, yes. Oh yeah, they had something to play. There was always, uh, I think we maybe enjoyed it as much as them kids nowadays. Um, I never know a day that we were bored now that's the funniest thing when I hear the kid, grandkids say, I'm bored, Ma, I'm bored. I never heard bored when I grew up. There wasn't no such a thing as bored because if you said, I'm bored, your mother would give you a shove and take over and go do some work. So you never said bored. There was not such a thing as being bored. You had to work. Now you kind of mentioned earlier that you did some trapping while you were out. Lot, yes. Farm, what exactly did you trap? Here. Let's stand by the by the shade a little okay. bit. I have real light skin, I have to be real oh, that's careful. Fine. Yeah. We were trapping that creek, that's the creek down there. We'll walk down. The cattle are on the other side of the creek now. That creek goes all the way out. Then we went out, and there are some places where you had rocks in the creek, and you would catch mings. You know what a ming is? Mm -mm. For, for them fur collars that they used, the women used to. Oh, your grandmother maybe has a ming coat. Maybe, I don't know. Nowadays they can, not a lot to make them anymore. So we would trap. In the 40s, we got as high as $45 for a, a good mink. Wow. And $45, like today, would be like $300. And how many would you catch? We would catch, well, you had to go out early in the morning before a run set. The earlier you were, the better luck you had. If a man got caught in the trap, and about an hour later she was off, she would eat her leg, own leg off and would get off. Okay. And they would live, they would heal shot, and they would live. But you want to catch that before they got off. So we caught one year when I bought the clarinet and the, I think we had like about five minks and a baby, 50 rabbits, uh, 25 uh, uh, muskrats, 10 skunks. Skunks, you got $3 for a skunk. You know what a skunk is? Yeah, I know what a skunk is. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
What did the traps look like? Were they the ones with the teeth that would what? plant? What did the traps look like that you caught? Trap. Did you, did you see a gopher trap already? No. Is it the, like the teeth that come up to the... Uh, okay. Maybe I'll see one. Maybe okay. he's got some here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's uh, where you feed the cattle. They have a trailer and they, they put it in them troughs. Oh, right along here. Right now. here is some yearlings in here and over uh, there there's the, the heifers. But the, you wouldn't have the troughs. You would have just put it in the pen. You wouldn't have the troughs like this to put the hay in, or would you when you uh, were When a child? I was young, there was just a fence, and you went in the gate and you unloaded the hay. There was no, no, just nothing like that. Dumped a bale in? No, 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 no. Okay. No, not even bales. No? It was, loo it was mostly all loose stuff, yep. Okay. You had no balers. The balers only came out when I was, uh, oh, the square balers were out in the 30s with wire, but... Uh, around this area, they didn't have the bailers uh, at all. Uh, they were hard to handle the bales. Now, this is his feed here. Smell the silage? Oh, I smell it, yeah. <laughs> now, we'll walk up there. You'll t you'll When you're closer, you get the better it'll smell. Now, this has been where you kept all of your stuff? Do That's you where, where, where uh, my boy feeds his cattle. These, these here are heifers that are going to be bred for mothers, not the Holsteins, you know, the black and white, just the black. Oh my God, has she got them fat. Oh my goodness. Look at how fat they are. So this would have been where a pen was when you were a child. I'm just curious how this compares to when you were a child. When I was a child, we had the, the cattle at this time of the year out in the pastures. Just the, we didn't have them in the yard somewhere. And we fed them by hand. It was a lot harder, you know, because you fed them by hand. So you fed them as very little as you had to. The cattle, the horses were fed. But now these heifers are far too fat. <laughs> they might not. They might not breed. Yeah. Very nice though. Them heifers are worth about. It's not these two nicer ones here. Okay. Eight hundred dollars. And what would they have been when you were a child? How much would a about good have gone for? Fifty dollars, sixty dollars maybe. Okay. My wife got a heifer from at home, about a heifer like this, a red heifer, about as big. And I sold it. I had to sell it because she chummed the fence. I got sixty-six dollars. So now they'd be eight hundred dollars. How many uh, cows would you have? As how many, or did your dad have? We uh, we had usually about 100, my dad and I together. And then my brother and I, we had more. And then my son has close to 200. Okay. They have a lot more land. Okay. Yeah. These are bred, these are going to be bred, these are going to be bred now in the month. And then in nine months, they'll have a little calf. Did you breed them as well? We, uh, or I no. say, did your dad when, breed when, them as well? Okay, when we, when my dad and I farmed, you had the bulls out with the mothers all year round. You got calves all year. Now they don't. The bulls are kept separate from the heifers. So the, the calf and the mothers, I mean, whatever. So they start calving maybe in the middle of March and they're done by May 15. Okay. But you guys and, just would have had them ready any time of year. Oh, oh, we had them any time of year. Well, and the and the and the reason, huh? How do you tell if a cow's pregnant? Just starts getting fat? No, I tell you what, there's a lot of farmers that breed, Andrew, he breeds his cattle artificial breeding. What they feed artificial breeding, you buy the semen and froze, and you watch the, the heifer of the cow. When she's in heat, when she chumps another cow and the, she stays standing, then they breed them. And it's just about 100%. But how would you tell when... When you were a child, how did your dad tell us to, to, to watch for one to... to one to calf? Yeah. How did you oh, no. You, it just happened. You know when a mother gets a baby? She gets a big belly. Same thing? Yeah. Okay. Do you know oh, when she gets a baby? No. Oh. You never know when the cow's going to oh, get the you calf. Oh, you guys didn't know. It was no. just... No, no, no. But you know pretty close. You know pretty close. Okay. Because, uh, yeah, you know but pretty you, close. you could tell just because the cow's... Well, if you have to... Let's say you let the bull out now... They have to calve in nine months. Okay. Whoever breeds, you know. But uh, uh, 
now there's no cows here, right here, the cows over there that are not, that are not done calving. But I could tell you in 36 hours when I see the cow, your, your hip caved in. When you do that all your lifetime, you kind of see the way they walk to take themselves a little corner. Oh, so you guys you just know? learned. So you, all the time, see, oh. and as a little boy, you learn that from, from your parents and you learn that, that when now, yeah, they cow's got a calf. Well, how do you know it's going to calf? Well, uh, now that heifer there, it's the only one in here that's spread. The big one over here is the only one? Yep, okay. she's spread. Do you know why she's spread? You see her little tits down at the bottom? A little oh, otter? Yeah. That white? She's yeah. spread, and I asked the boy if she's spread, set one of them. That's the one. She's spread. She'll calf around June. Oh, so she, yeah. okay. Yeah, she'll show up. I want to walk up here and show with some of that feet. Okay. And these whole scenes here, these are not that from his hurt. These are bought from his uh, cousin. And they were steers. They catch her and he feeds them and then they butcher them. He makes them good and fat. They're real good meat when you got them good and fat. Oh. So they're not ready yet. They're going to be maybe maybe this fall or next spring. Then they're they, big. Aren't, they aren't big enough yet. Yeah. yeah. I have a, a friend that's a doctor. He went to school. He was here for a while, and then uh, two years ago he was here in January, and I showed the silage pile. Well, you guys don't know anything about silage. What that is is corn or hay, uh, uh, oats. Corn is uh, just before you combine it okay. to go out and chop it. Yep. That's what they call silage. Okay. Now, we cover it so you don't get no spoilage. Some guys, they don't cover it. We cover it for no spoilage. And uh, actually, you could make wine out of it. Oh. It Did smells you? good. It does not smell as bad. What we smelled back there, it was more the manure. Mm. This here is silage. That's corn. Okay, uh, let me let's smile, find a spot we took out this morning. I don't think he's taking any out no more the way it looks. It's not really fresh, so. Smell that one. Good whiff. You get high in that side. That's high. See, here's yeah, the corn. Yeah, you can see, see little corn the kernel. kernels there. See, here's the kernels, see? Yeah, there's one there, yeah. That's excellent feed. This is one of the best feed there is for cattle, is corn. So is that what you would have fed your... No, when I grew up... There was no calling a uh, silage. Okay. No, this only came uh, in the 50s. No, when I was raised, no. You would have done oats uh, or? You run, yeah, oats, dry, hay, like bales, you know, dry, okay. loose. See, now we, we, we forked our hay by fork loose. He chops it, puts it in a wagon where there's a scale. He puts this in, there's a mixer that mixes it. Then they put it out for the cattle. The cattle like, get fatter than the people. <laughs> Do you see how I like that not... when you were a... Oh, yeah. yeah, yes, yes. And the bulls are over this side now. Yeah, there is one over there alone. Yeah, lots over this side. Were you raised on the farm? My dad was. Oh, okay. Okay, well, go down now. I don't have minimal knowledge of farming. See, 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 this, uh, this silage pile... coming. <laughs> this silage pile was about from here on over. This so big. This so big. Would this still be so, so, so he, from so, last year's? No, this here was from last year. That's from this year. But he starts feeding the old and next year he yeah. feeds it from the other end. Oh, okay. So he puts the pile here. So this is yeah. where, the, okay. That's where the it was, yeah. The stuff he planted will go so, on this yeah. side. So, but if you get some farming you're not to get some every year they're lucky they have feed now for one year mm -hmm. but if they you know uh, good farm practices are if they have enough feed for the cattle in our area because most of our land is for cattle so you got to have how have farming techniques change from when you were a child to today so much that I can't even didn't even tell you when now uh, okay 
This heifer here, the meat is just as good as that black one. Okay. If you take this heifer to the sales barn, you might get $600 and you'll get $800, the same weight, just because of the color. Wow. They, what they, okay, they want black, black white face, or Charlet strictly Charlet. This, what they call, it's like a, you know, it's not black and it's not Charlet, it's got really, it's not, and they, they, they the feed lots so on them. Oh, okay. I think they don't feel out quite as nice, maybe, but the, the, the price is, and he gets one every year. For some reason, he always has one or two. And a lot of times he butchers them, then it doesn't matter. And that's the barn where we used to milk okay. in here. Whew, that's warm. <laughs> it is good. So this is still the original farm. Get the original the farm, barns? except for the house is new. How old would that barn be? That barn is uh, was built in 1970, okay. and uh, the poor guy died, and the lady quit farming, and I bought the barn, and we moved it here. Oh, okay. The old barn. There was an older barn. Then uh, my dad helped me move this here yet. Would you have done as a child to help the field, um, help the soil keep having nutrients in it so you didn't overuse it? How did you prevent that from happening? That's one thing. That's one thing my dad was real, real uh, okay. What we did, you didn't want to overuse your soil. You don't want to uh, let it blow away. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't want to. Uh, let all kinds of weeds grow with their, their noxious sweets. Mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, we 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 were careful to to. Uh, I would say this soil here. When I got here in '50, see the farm was built in, in uh, 1900, so it was only 50 years old. That was new. Now it's 2000. Now it's only 50 years old. I would say this field is just as good as it was when the day I started. So what would you, did you guys plant on the, we, you can plant all the time? Oh yes, so what would you do, you rotate your land all the time. Like this year's wheat in there, next year you might have corn in, then have sunflowers in. When I farmed, I had summer hollow. You let it rest one year. Now they don't do that, they spray it. Okay. And they can raise your crop every year. So you guys uh, but, uh, and, and, we, and we didn't use fertilizer. Now they use a lot of fertilizer. So we don't know what's going to happen in 50 years if the land will produce as good as it, now, as it does now. But to say over east and Fargo, they're using it much longer than we are. Uh, and it's still growing. But see, these are his cattle now. They are all done calving. And so these, these are calved. Them, they're all done calving. I want to walk here, but anyhow. See, there was a house. This third house I showed you. Mm -hmm. There was a house, the picture there, and here, and one was here. This would have been the third house here. It's the third house. Yeah, that was the third house. And it's a fifth, Daniel, it's the fifth generation. To be out on the farm. On the farm, yes. And I sold them the farm two years ago. Uh, the home place, I sold them 10 years ago. Because, uh, see, these, these are all mamas now. These are all have calves. These you guys separate the, them out the same the, way yes, when you were uh, When I was home, no. They calved, like I said, they calved earlier round. Okay, so you didn't worry about separating. So, so, so you didn't separate them. You just had them together. These are all cows that are done calving. See, that's loose hay. These cows don't get silage. Because you give them silage, the milk, the milk so good and they get the diarrhea, the calves. Oh, okay. Until they're about two, three weeks old. And then they, they, we can, yeah, we found that out. That doesn't work very good when you feed them silage. 
This is one of the really old barns, so it's built in the 30s. This barn would have been born, built in the 1930s? In, in the 30s, yeah. Ah. That barn was built in the 30s. And what that, was this barn used for? This barn, okay, there were three families. He had his own barn. Grandpa, great-grandpa had his own barn. So did my dad. So okay. three bar, each one had his own barn and his own house. To keep all their own stuff. They lived in the same yard, okay. but they all had their own. Okay, they didn't share the barns. No, right no, 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 no. See now, look how they can smell, how they know they're strange people. Yeah, they, see, now, they look I, a little upset. See, <laughs> see I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go in now with you guys because they protect a little. Yeah. yeah. See, they, uh, they protect a little. Never want yeah. to mess with mom and her kids. Oh, oh, oh my God! See there, how that cow goes potty right on the hay. Okay. That's now, what yours would have done see, too. See, yep. See, Andrew, what I told you a while ago, he's feeding the inside, so it saves a lot of hay. But the reason he does it here, see, he brings them from there. The calf in there. First, where the bulls are, that's where he feeds them in the winter. Then he brings them in here. That's where they calf. And when they calf, they bring them in that little gate and he puts them in here, away from the other cows. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the mothers will take their calves before they calfed. Oh, okay. They want a calf before they had calfed. Oh. They, they want the, they, they clean. So you take them apart. Then you put them in here for about two to three days till the calves are good and ready. Then he lets them out there. Okay. You don't want to let them out there right away because sometimes the calf, uh, the mother might not take the calf or the mother might not give milk. That way you can watch them. In a few days, they'll put them out. Sometimes, maybe like now, maybe he'll let them in a while. So, yeah, that's how that's done. And here's the beaver creek right here. It's the water. Used to swim in. See, that's, see, that was a good place for swimming. Oh, we had an excellent place for swimming. And when I was young, when I was a little boy, you know what a 16 foot plank is? A plank 16 foot feet long, a wood. Oh, yep, a plank of wood, yeah. They laid, they said two 16 footers would reach, and now it would take maybe four. Oh, so it's That's how much size. bigger it got. And here they had the garden in here. Where that plastic is there, mm -hmm. there was all garden. And those kids would walk across the creek in the blanks, and they would have watermelon patch potato patch, a lot of garden stuff. Oh, garden stuff. Uh, that's all they did. You know, that garden and milk, they didn't go to town to buy very little nothing. So your mother would have to cross this little street and my mother And my, and my mother had to, my mother took care of, of the garden. My dad, yes, he did help plant it maybe, mm -hmm. but not much picking. Yeah, that's... And I did never help the garden either when I farmed, but now I do the garden. The wife doesn't do much of the garden no more. What chores did you usually do as a child? Hmm? What chores did you usually do as a child? As a child, I had a. I was a chicken boy. I always had to take care of the chickens and the, and the eggs, and I milked and helped feed the. Cow. We had a lot of sheep, but with the brothers and sisters more so. But as I got older, then I helped my dad outside. Hard work, heavier work. Hay, hauling hay and haul, yeah. Working okay. it actually in the fields, doing that stuff. I plowed when I was uh, eight years old. Back there where them green bins are, mm -hmm. I went back with one, you two guys are so young, but I went back with two horses and with one plowshare, with one, uh, what they call bottom. bottom. Okay. The, now the track they pull like eight and ten. Okay. I had one with two horses. My brother had two with four horses, but I was so young, and it started hailing, and the horses ran away, and we had to walk home. We bawled. Never forget that. The kids had to do a lot of, not hard work, but they, a lot of work that was kind of dangerous, if you think back now. When but, would your day usually begin? You went back, you, I would say you went out in the, and uh, nine o'clock you were out in the field, you went home at 11.30, and at 2 o'clock you were out again in the field. Until so you ate about an hour and a half, let the horses run. Then you stayed out till 6. By the time you came home, it was 6. Then mother had a supper ready. Then you eat. Then they all went out. That's one thing in the farm. 
They always ate at noon, at breakfast, and at supper, and all of the family together. My dad did, I did, and uh, I really push it to my family. When you come home from work, try and eat together. Because if you eat together, you might poke your sister, don't like her, or your brother, but things will come out in the, in the, in the supper table or in the dinner table. How they behave yeah. in school. One will say, did you hear he was mean in school? Oh, no. Well, you, then you hear it. Otherwise, if you don't eat together, you don't hear. As a parent, that's really important to hear. What time was your day done? What time would you go to bed? What time did you go to bed? Tell you what, we went pretty well with the sun. Okay. <laughs> so the sun set, and then it was time to if come that, in and get ready for bed? If that, if that uh, tells you something. In the summer, we went to bed when the sun went down, and it got up when the sun got up. It was early and long days. In the winter, we went to bed at 6 o'clock when the sun went down, and you got up at 9 o'clock. No, really. You just went whenever the Pretty well by the sun. sun, yeah. Oh, my, my parents, my dad would sit up and read maybe till 10, 9. Nah, maybe seldom till 10 in the winter. Mm -hmm. There was no light. It just had that kerosene light. Oh, I suppose. Not, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's go a little more. So it's green bin. This is a hopper in the bottom from a green bin. Mm -hmm. What he's going to do, he's going to put a, a green bin on top of that. And then you put wheat in. And then you don't have to shovel a bit. Mm. You open up the bottom and the green runs down. When I was young, we shoveled it in, in and we shoveled it out. Now they auger it out, that yellow deal there, and they auger it in. So it's much less, much less work. That green bin that he's got the auger in, he's going to empty it and he's going to put it up in here. So you guys would just, with the door, just like your grain bins would look the same way when you would... Or was it more in a barn that you used for grain bins? The green bin? Was, our, did it our, look like this? Our green bins were like, there was a shed beside there, and that's okay. where your green was. Most of the people had the green bins by the barns. They had some green sheds separately, but not all that many. Uh, farmers were not that big at that time. So that's how it was. This, this here, I don't know, maybe you guys know more than, I don't know. This is what they call a loader, a farmhand, okay. a loader. You run it from, uh, with the handles up there, mm -hmm. so it goes up and down. That's what they call a loader. That uh, you carry out bales, you know, manure, dirt, whatever. How would you have carried them before? We didn't have that. These actually only came out... In 1944, my dad bought an amp tractor, and I would say 1950, the loaders came out, but they were not near as good, so they didn't use it for a lot of stuff because they were not good. But uh, they bucked the hay together and put like for groundwork. But these here work like uh, uh, just like caterpillars. Uh, a lot of them newer tractors are fun wheel drive tractors. This is the older tractor. This is uh. Uh, you, you use that just for, for every day in the farm. Every day in the farm. So this is uh, the greenery where you put green in. This is the combine. This is the swather. I don't know what a swather is. Where they swather down the field, the lace of swather on the ground. Green. Okay, to cut it so it... Okay. Cut, cut it green down. Okay. That's a swather, and this is uh, the combine where they pick it up, you know, and then they oh. come on. Yeah. Right. And this is uh, for the solids cutter, uh, a picker. The cutter is not here. This is a generator. This generator is used if you run out of electricity. That will run the whole farm. Get away, puppy. That runs the whole farm. You put this cord 
and by your what they call big fuse box uh -huh. where the main line is yeah. and you can run the whole farm wow. but you have to run the tractor out here in the farm, you have to have it because if you're a milker or if you, let's say you get a big storm, ice storm and the lights go down, how are you going to pump water? How are you going to yeah, do everything see. you do? Yeah. Get away, now, puppy. With all, of the, with all this equipment. This I didn't have when I was little either. Yeah. yeah. With all this equipment, how, much, how many acres can your son this, this, this depends. The seeding, the seeding capacity is much different nowadays. We have a lot of farmers that seed four, five thousand, six thousand acres. When I farmed, a big farmer was four hundred acres. Was a pretty big farmer, cropland. Same with and, your dad. And, yeah, about. Well, a little more when I farmed because the tractors were a little better. But my dad would rent it out to his sons, like I said, and to his son, uh, brother-in-laws. He didn't want to work so hard, so he rented it out if he had more land than he could handle. Now, you can seed so much more. Now, my son is seeding for other people. Okay. Because the equipment is so high. I'll, we'll go over there, I'll show you some of the equipment, how high it is, it's really, really high. But uh, maybe we're getting out of, you want me to talk about older stuff, I suppose? Yeah, well, I'm just uh, okay. what, if your dad see, would see, see, me. see, I remember, the people, when they planted the corn, when I was with the horses with a two-row, two-row corn planter. Okay. So two rows at a time. Two rows as you would go. And you could plant at the highest most you could plant, maybe was 20 acres a day, if you know what 20 acres is. About, yeah. Then you had a big day. Uh, now, they put eight rows, each got eight row, and some have 12 rows, and some have even 16 rows over east. We cannot use them that big because we got quite a bit of rocks and hills. We can't go that big. So now when you would have been a child though, you would have just had two things down here digging it. Just, it just, just, okay, just, but just this here and this here. That's the most. And two wheels and one tongue. And that's a fertilizer, what they call fertilizer. They put fertilizer down. Mm -hmm. We didn't put fertilizer down. And this is the corn. They were only maybe this big. You did have something like this on top, though, to feed. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, down. yeah, yeah. But they seed a lot different than uh, than our seed, but it's the same principle. It, uh, okay. You know, it's the same principle. Uh, this is what they call a corn planter and for, uh, sunflower planter. Yeah, he planted, uh, I don't know how much, but he planted quite a bit for other people. Now, would you and your neighbors get together during harvest and harvest all of one person's land and then no, the No, no, no. Uh, not uh, not my my days. There, there are some younger couples that were married. They didn't have enough horses or not enough equipment. But when I grew up, my father had everything already, so he could. We would do our crop by ourselves, and then he had a trash machine. You know what that is? Where you trash your green. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. thrashing type thing where it uh, separates. Uh, it. it separates the green from the straw. Then the neighbors came together. I trash you, and you help me, and you trash. Then they helped each other out because you okay. need manpower. Okay. That's so what I did, a so lot. Okay. <laughs> a lot, this was hard. That was hard, really hard. And this here is the machine shop, what they call, where they fix the stuff when it breaks. When you break, I never had that. When I, uh, I bought most of this stuff. But when I grew up, this is the air compressor, where you pump your tires full. For air, when I was young, you pumped it by hand. That you know, you a long time. For well, tractor tires. You, you only had no. He had no tractor right, tires. tires. <laughs> That's right. So it wasn't too bad. No, no, they didn't have. So there was no, uh, no, no air compressors. So if you had a flat tire, you had to pump like hell to get the tire full. Okay, so you patch your tire, and it was a, a what they call a coal patch. And if you weren't lucky, you patched it before you got to town. The pump you had along. That's how, when I grew up, that still was on. Now they, 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 they got air compressed the same as in town. They can now blow up a tire just like that. And uh, see now here, this, uh, see here, this here. If, I know you're not the farm, farmers, but the,
Yeah. yeah. See, that comes out of there. Mm -hmm. And they use, what they use now, like when I was young, every bolt that you took off a, a, a rim or of a car or of a, a plow, oh, it was hard sometimes. You couldn't get them open because they were rusty. Now they got them air hammers. They're in there. You put it on air and you just... You know, just just like that. I don't know exactly where he's got them, but uh, so we have most of the tools, most of the tools that uh, I don't know where he's got them. I don't get out of here no so often no more. Well, is this a is this a harness that you would have used for the horse? Oh yes, yes. Uh, my oldest boy fixed some harnesses. Uh, he painted them. And this would have been seats but, for the horses. That's or? for two. That's for. Uh, no, that's a collar. The collar, the round, goes oh, by the I neck. I see it now. By the neck, and the bridles are hanging on there. Yeah. And here, these blue ones, that's where the neck, neck yoke went for the, for, the, uh, for the tongue. And these are where they pulled. This, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's my oldest son put them here. Or here, the air hammers. Yeah. Or here. See here. Yeah, you put the air hammer here, and works. And a lot of power. This saves a lot, a lot, a lot of hand, hand power, for uh, for farming. This was where I learned. That's where I went to school. But the, the, it was sitting down there by the trees. In this building. This is the building. This is your old schoolhouse building that we're standing in right now. Yep. Oh, and you guys bought this about what? We bought it for three hundred dollars. The school was down there, and there was no more kids. Well, there were some, but not enough. They had to close the schools, and they sold them, and I bought, we bought one. It's a larger size. My school. brother bought it, and I bought it from him. But oh, okay. it doesn't make no difference, really. So you had the stove, all the kids, the teacher, everything oh, yes, in this yes, one yes. room. One room. This was, uh, okay. Uh, let me see one's here. It doesn't show. Oh, yeah, it does show. From over in there, up there's a line there in that wood. Oh, like right up here? Oh, there's a line there? No, no. Oh, no, just that one. There's a line there. This was all windows, all the way over here. This was all windows. Okay. Because he had no electricity, so you had to have good sunlight. You needed light. But, damn cold in the winter. There were more windows over here, too. There was all windows. See, it was so cold. Yeah. But that's, and here was the cold check, right here. What they call a hallway. You come in by the door, it was a hallway, and then was a cold check, and then you wash your hands and your, your, your hands in there. You know, there was a, a you know, a wall here. Mm -hmm. And this here, there were 30 kids in here in school, all eight grades. Right in this area. And most of my brothers and sisters, well, in fact, I shouldn't say most, I think all 13 of my brothers and sisters went to school. And the last year of my sister, but she had a little more than what I told you earlier, she had more college than some of them other okay. kids. That time you had to have college. So she taught school for two of my brothers. Okay. How did yeah. that work? My dad laid the law to him, and my sister says they were some of the best students. They were all, they were real good students to begin with. They were good students. They didn't so. try to take advantage of your sister? Huh? They, they didn't try to take advantage of her? No, no, no. She, she had those 11 kids by herself, well, not at that, that time, but she, uh, oh yeah, she was, she could handle it pretty good. And this is a welder, where you weld things together to steel. Mm -hmm. It's a welder. Well, that stuff. You have different types of metal, different types of. Some stuff has to be inside so it doesn't uh, get wet or not too dry. Some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the winter time, they have heaters to heat that. Mm -hmm. Keep it warm. And this is about the only shop that I know we have underground heat. We put underground heat in, electric heat, this want. heats, heats it, and then when the floor is warm, you can work in here when it's 40 below and the floor, uh, floor is warm, 
you don't have to have it warm. Oh, so, nice. yeah, that's also my dad. My dad had that idea. He was still alive. Put in, uh, you know, he was really that way. And my brother, he put it in. And, yeah, I'm not much of a plumber or a builder. Yeah. And this is a gas welder. What do you call a gas welder? They cut iron. Mm -hmm. You know something about that? Yeah. Well, what else you want to know? That here, that's the feed wagon I, was, I told you. Where they feed the cattle with. Okay. They dump the feed in there with that loader. Mm -hmm. And that weighs it, and they know exactly how much feed. And that out there is the green drill where they put weed in. That, that drill there costs over 50000 and this here is over 50000 Wow. So you're talking 200000 This tractor he bought, my boy bought that two years ago. They're like 100 and, I really don't know, about 130 I suppose. A large investment now. Now they got it down. They have the deals where they tell them how to drive. Uh, you set it, and it follows it by itself. Oh, so. it has a little tracking? In it, so it will just, it knows the field. That deal up there. That deal up there. That's one of them, what they call, you start it out, and uh, you set it, and it follows, the, you turn around, and it always keeps the same area, so as far, what do you call that? The GPS. Yeah. Somewhere. Tracking, yeah, I've, I've heard about yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of young, young people, they got it. I didn't have it when I was young. No. When I was a little boy, we had a plowway by horses. <laughs> and that's how you kept your straight lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. When I was a young boy, we had to carry the water. Wherever we went with water, we had to carry the water. And uh, they moved out here from Hake, my great-grandparents, in 1900, because they had no water. So they moved right here to the Vedeville, to my where my grandparents, great-grandparents, and my dad moved, and they had a lot of water. But in the 70s, the water got so bad we couldn't use the water no more. Even so bad we couldn't use it for the cattle. So what we did, I told my dad that I'm going to move away. We haven't got no water. No, he said, you cannot move away. So he went and he gave us some land, and we made an artesian well a half a mile from here, where the water comes out. This is the water from a half a mile. No pump, no electricity, just pressure from the artesian well. The well is 2,600 feet deep. When, would, when did you dig the in, well? In the 70s, 1973, 74, 75, that, that time. So my brother and I and Ben, we made a well together. And it heats, it feeds my cattle over there. We got about five different places. It goes through Daniel's house. It heats this garage in the winter through the garage. It comes over here. It heats my brother's garage. And it goes out to the road and, the, and it's the cattle drink the water. All one, one well. And my brother Adam, his son is farming and he's a milker. It heats his barn, and it heats his house, and he drinks the water for the cattle, all one well. The well went out five years ago. The first well, we got paid from the government, some of it, not all of it. This well, we decided we're gonna do on our own because when you work with government, you have to have everything just so. So the boys decided they're gonna go on their own, and the well costs, $30,000. If the government would have made the well, it would have cost $40,000. <laughs> so that sometimes works. we have to steal out the government. We have to pay for that anyhow, somehow or another. Now we can use the well as we fit. Otherwise, we had to use it just for the cattle and then bring it into the farm. Now we can feed the farm and run it out to the cattle. Because mm. cattle come before people. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that one. Uh, so we're using the well. Ben is using it. His son Andrew down the new feedlot. That's mm -hmm. all the way pumped down wow. there. 
Arnold using it, and Adam, and Ben, and Andrew, and my son, five of us. So five times three, uh, 30,000 isn't quite as bad as it sounds. Mm -hmm. You don't need no electricity, can't go out, you got water, mm -hmm. you're seeing it right here. Yep. Uh, the pressure is about, when it comes down, it's about, I don't know exactly, it comes out 80 degrees out of the well, but when it gets down here, I think it's down to about 70 degrees warm. It's not good for drinking water, but when it, uh, uh, the pressure gets lower as you use it, as it goes farther out, but well, we're pumping it all the way out, okay. pushes it all the way out. Yeah, so that's course. about the well. That was not my days. My days we had to carry the water. So, <laughs> oh, uh, ready, yeah. so. Yeah, Okay. Did, did parents help uh, set up their kids, help their kids find husbands and wives? Okay, my brothers and sisters, no. My brothers and sisters all found their own. But uh, my mother, brothers and sisters, and my dad, brothers and sisters, they were what, straight out. Yeah, I just want to go straight out. They were... Uh, a lot of them were put together from neighbors, tell him this is a good boy and uh, he would be a good mate or whatever. But my brothers, no. They, they've, they've, see, when the Model A's came out and uh, the horses kind of draggled away in the 40s, people got around a little bit better. Now my dad, my dad took me to Bismarck and my brother John. And the way up we were fighting. We went up with the, with the 39 Plymouth, and we were fighting about something. I don't know about what, straight out. And when we got to Bismarck, he took us to the penitentiary. Did you ever see that penitentiary? Yeah, I have. I'm just curious why he would take you there. And he took us there, and he said, that's where they put the mean boys and girls when they don't behave with their parents. That's where they go. And I was so scared. I was scared shitless. I thought he's going to leave us there because we were fighting pretty bad in the way up. <laughs> and then they slammed the doors behind us and we were in the, oh my God, I just had goose pimples. For ever since that, when I drive to Bismarck, I drive around that road with a pen, I always think about my dad. <laughs> I tell you what, that was a dang good lesson for us. <laughs> and then he took us from there yeah, well, John was a little older. He would say, ah, Dad is just playing games. I was a little bit too young yet. I kind of believed him. And then when we got to the to the uh, capital, he said, Rob, boys, if you want to walk up the steps, you can. I'm going to take the elevator. The capital was built, I think, in 1936. It was built in the 30s, maybe in 32. He took us up there and he showed us. Yeah, it must have been because he took us to the pen. And I was just a little guy. I was born in 30. So he took us to the capital. And uh, and we ran up the steps. And when we got up there, Dad wasn't up there yet. So we thought, well, we'll run back down. But we didn't realize that Dad went up with the elevator. That, you know, he must have stopped in some places and looked. So he, he, we, he came up and we went down. When we got down, we were not, he wasn't there. We ran up there again. And the next day were we stiff. Oh my God, were we stiff <laughs> from running up the stairs like that. <laughs> and which was a real good experience for us kids, for Dad to show us the capital. My wife said she only got to Bismarck about twice, three times maybe, as long as she was single. I got to Bismarck quite a bit. And then and, uh, when I was 18, he took, me, took me to Minneapolis and he told me the big tall buildings, the uh, insurance buildings, the big things. He said, you know, who build them buildings? And I said, well, no, not really. I said, they must have a lot of money. He said, the people that power the money build them buildings, the interest building. And he said, if you want to help building, just pay a lot of insurance in your life, I mean, in interest. If you... And that stuck to me too. I paid very, very, very little interest in my life. I always had that in my mind. Uh, I'm not going to help build them damn buildings. <laughs> so you can try it. Here. Here.